Well, outrage on the streets of Pakistan over a move by India to tighten its control over one of the most volatile and disputed territories in the world that is claimed by both nuclear armed neighbors. You and I know, uh, may know more about what is happening with uh, Indian controlled Kashmir than the people who actually live there. And that is because it is under a broad communications blackout as we speak. Troops, uh, as we understand it, out on the streets of Jammu and Kashmir enforcing a security clampdown after New Delhi stripped the Muslim majority territory of its special status, giving the central government greater control. One Kashmiri politician warns that once people start understanding what's been happening over the past few days, the situation there is going to turn very, very volatile. Well, Pakistan furious over the move and has downgraded relations with India. I'm joined now by the Pakistani High Commissioner to the UK, Mohammed Nafiz Sakaria. And sir, thank you for joining us. There is a communications blackout. What can you tell us about what is going on in Kashmir as we speak? Yeah, thank you very much, Paki. Uh, in fact, uh, this is a matter of great concern to us. Mm. And you have seen that everybody is expressing concern, including people in this country. And I think this is what is worrisome, that there, there's a track record of in, uh, atrocities in that part of the world, mm. which is under the uh, occupation of India, where, uh, in Jammu and Kashmir. And we are concerned about it because uh, you have seen the uh, OSCHR report, Geneva's report. Mm last year and this year also, which has uh, elaborated as to what all sorts of atrocities have been perpetrated against the defenseless Kashmiris, Kashmiri Muslims over there. And this is what our worry is, first. Second, I think the action which India has taken is a complete violation, the blatant violation mm -hmm. of the UN Security Council resolutions on Kashmir. Because it does not allow any material change or permanent change in the status of the uh, Jammu and Kashmir, because it's a disputed uh, territory. It is an internationally recognized dispute, which is on the agenda of the UN Security Council. Right, and, we, and we'll work out, and we'll discuss whether we think anything will happen from that end going forward. India's Prime Minister spoke to the nation uh, just moments ago in a televised address, as I understand it. Narendra Modi said, and I quote, we will free Jammu and Kashmir of terrorism. He also said he is confident that the people of Jammu and Kashmir will defeat separatism and move forward with new hopes. Your reaction? Well, I think uh, you need to understand that's a self-determination movement which has been also promised to them, which they are doing for their right to self-determination, which is enshrined in the very UN Security Council mm. resolutions, which call for uh, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, right to self-determination mm. for the Kashmiris through a vote which is to be uh, uh, supervised by the UN. So, so they, no. they can call, they can use any excuse to justify their action, but the fact of the matter is that they are actually pursuing this uh, right to self-determination. Sir, so, why do you believe India has done this now? Well, I think this is going on for quite some time, and the international community and the world has not paid much attention to this, uh, this uh, tragedy, which is going on for many, many, many decades, mm. actually. If you look at the statistics, since in 1947, on 27 October, when they landed illegally into the territory, which is, uh, you know, uh, was supposed to go to Pakistan, according to the partition plan, they landed over there and they carried out massacre of people According to uh, British media, more than 300,000... And, uh, and this is 47, and we are yeah. now in 2019. Yeah, I know. Let me, let me just put this to you, because you, you, you've, you've, you've said that the international community has sort of turned its back. It just, it, it just hasn't taken this issue on as it might have done. With the greatest respect, you know, Pakistan doesn't seem to have many options at this point. What, what one commentator writing today, that its only option seems to be to throw up its hands in the air and say it would complain before uh, international forums. There seems to be, would you agree, a dearth of international interest or leadership about what happens next and what to do about this. No, first of all, I must say that whatever the circumstances may be, the government of Pakistan is determined to express solidarity mm. and support to Kashmiris, number one. Number two is that 
we had been taking and we this is our responsibility as a responsible member of the international community to create awareness to what is happening in indian occupied kashmir and there is blatant human rights violations which are going on and these are documented it's not me who's saying that these are documented by the un by the amnesty international and so many other institutions did the us president mm -hmm. antagonize narendra modi when he said with the Pakistani Prime Minister in the White House only a week or so ago. I can sort this out for you. Well, I've been asked to. Yeah, okay. Let, let, let go. Yeah, this it's a dispute and it's a matter of concern to everyone because mm. you very rightly said in the beginning that this dispute, you referred to two nuclear armed neighbors. Okay. Mm. Now, this dispute is a matter of concern to everyone and they people want to play their role in mediation and resolving this issue peacefully, amicably, and this is what our policy is. Mm. We want the amicable resolution of this dispute in accordance with the UN Security Council resolutions. How concerned are you about what happens next? Well, I think everybody, it's a, con it's a common mm. concern, should be a common concern to the entire world because the way things are moving, they have taken a very dangerous path. They have closed down the whole valley. They, there is no voice coming out. I don't know how many people they might have killed by now and buried mm. or maybe transported somewhere. This is, this is something field pro. This is something based on record I'm talking about. So I think this is going to escalate the situation. This is going to escalate the tension in, the, uh, in that region. With that, we're going to leave it there. So we thank you very much indeed for coming on. Thank you. And I want to go to Nikhil Kumar, but uh, as we speak to Nikhil, we can see that Narendra Modi is speaking live now in India. Uh, we'll continue to monitor those comments. But Nikhil, uh, as, uh, as we know, the situation is becoming increasingly tense. Why did Mr. Modi decide to make this move now? Robin, taking a step back, Mr. Modi, his, uh, his political party, the BJP, which is from the right end of the political spectrum here, uh, they've never made any secret of the fact for decades, uh, in fact, that they wanted this particular special provision, uh, which they removed earlier this week, uh, and thereby exerting more control on the affairs of Indian-controlled Kashmir, that they wanted it to go away. They always thought that the fact that it was there uh, was a problem. Uh, they've said again and again, Mr. Modi, uh, Mr. Modi's party had it in its manifesto when they fought the recent general election in which Mr. Modi was re-elected for a second term. So they have not made any secret of the fact that they thought that this was a problem, they thought that it had to go. A lot of people here have been pointing out that beyond that debate about whether or not that was right, the manner in which this was done, this all unfolded in a couple of hours on Monday uh, and then by Tuesday legislation was passed to do the other step, the other announcement which was uh, changing the way uh, that whole region is classified, Jammu and Kashmir state, uh, within which uh, Indian-controlled Kashmir falls. It was reclassified as a union territory. Part of it was also carved off into another union territory. And in the Indian system, states have much more power to direct their internal affairs than union territories, which are basically run from New Delhi. So now it's going to be run pretty much from New Delhi by Mr. Modi's government. All of it unfolded uh, very, very rapidly and against the backdrop, as our affiliate mentioned in that report, of this massive, almost all-encompassing security crackdown. Now, Robin, we were there earlier this year during the most recent India-Pakistan skirmishes. There were, you know, there was heavy security then, there were communications problems then, but nothing like this. And people that we've spoken to who know the region well, who've been going there ever since a bloody insurgency unfolded there in the early 90s, they've never seen anything like this. Everything has come to a standstill. So, so it's the manner in which this happened and that pretty much all-encompassing crackdown that a lot of people have been pointing out is the problem here.